Come down to CSEC 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to look at the major devices found in the 20 poems that are in the syllabus 2018 to 2023. I am Jermaine Hatton. Today is the 8th day of May in the year 2019. It's two days from English B 2019. I know you're a bit nervous. I'm here to help you, though, calm those nerves by a quick revision of the major devices in these poems. What I'm going to also do in this video, we're going to quickly look at the major themes found in these poems here. So if you're done with studying, let's sit back and quickly recap our poems. Let's go into it. Before we actually get into the video, let me remind you, you're heading to the exams on Friday with the hope of writing three essays. You're answering three questions in the exam in the form of three essays. So you're answering one question in the drama section that's between, you're choosing between The Tempest by William Shakespeare and T. John and His Brothers by Derek Walcott. One of those you're answering on. In the poetry section, the section B or the section 2, whatever it is, you are choosing between a question that names the two poems or a question that gives you a theme to compare two poems. And thirdly, in the third section, you are going into prose now. In the prose section, you're answering the question on the short story or you're answering the question on the book To Kill a Mockingbird or you're answering the question on Brett Eye's memory. Please read your instructions. It's just one question per section. Read the instructions, please. And try to spend 40 minutes. Try to spend 40 minutes with each of those questions. That will give you good time to recap your work. Though I'm about to give you a list of the major themes in the major poems, I want to also let you know that any poem any poem in the syllabus can be compared. All you have to do is simply tweak it to answer whatever question you're being asked. Just to recap for persons who do not already know, the poetry question in the CSEC exam will have two sections. Two uh, poetry questions, that is. Let me recap that. The poetry question in the CSEC exam will have two questions. One question will have two poems that they are going to name for you that you're going to compare using a theme. The second question, you will have to choose any two poems you have studied and compare it based on some similarity or some difference. Right? So that is it. I want you to understand again that any poem, any two poems can be compared. It's all about what you write in that essay. So let's go on to look at some of the major themes. So once upon a time, uh, we have hypocrisy coming out, and hypocrisy, death, dreams, desire. The death we are talking is not about the death of someone or some or people, but it's the death of someone's sincerity or the death of someone's innocence, right? There's a part of this person dying. So you know what the poem was about. Once upon a time, they used to laugh with their heart, but that's gone now, son. Now they laugh without their heart. So giving you a heads up of what the poem is about. You can go and check out that video if you do not know what that poem is about. Repetition is used there. Repetition is used in the sense of once upon a time. That's repeated. It's repeated to show two things. One, fairy tale. And two, to show how sincerely this man desperately wanted to go back to how he used to be once upon a time. Bird shooting season, uh, we have alliteration. A young lady was asking me, what is the alliteration there? It's men make marriages with their guns. Macho men making marriages with their guns. So alliteration is when we have a repetition of those consonant sounds. So we're seeing that there. And we're, again, showing you how much time and energy went into the preparation of those guns. Bird shooting season can be compared with using themes such as nature, uh, childhood experiences, patriarchal society. Remember, it's a child really who is looking on at what is going on in this poem here. 
right? So the woman speaks of the man who has employed her son. We have biblical allusion. We remember that the woman was talking about the man at the right hand side of the cross and so on. So we have biblical allusion being brought out there in that poem. We have irony. They were asking what kind of father would give bread give hot and exploding death to a son when he asks for bread. So that's a little irony there. If, if a father is a father, he would just want to give the best to his child and not death, obviously. So again, death, dreams, desires can be what you can compare this poem with if you're looking at some themes. Hypocrisy again is brought out in a stone's throw. We see that these men wanted to punish these this woman this prostitute who in their eyes committed a dreadful sin but they failed to realize that they themselves are sinners so it makes us wonder why exactly am i being punished am i punishing because am i being punished because i am committing a sin that is different from your sin and i love to ask the question is there a big sin and a small sin or are they all sins so Hypocrisy, of course, coming out there. Religion and discrimination. We've seen them discriminating against the woman in the poem. Uh, devices, metaphor, hail of, hail of kisses of stone. Pun, a stone throw. I'm saying it's a pun because we are playing on words. It can mean two things. A stone throw can mean we are in a close proximity. And a stone throw can also mean that we are so close to committing a dreadful sin or to have something dreadful being done to us. Of course, dialogue and so on is also used. Allusion, biblical allusion also used there. Dolce at the quorum est. We can see death and war. Ah, definitely. And I don't even have to explain that, I think. So, simile is used, coughing like hags, uh, bent double like old beggars on the sacks. All of those are similes. Give you a nice example of how hard these men had to work uh, to get back to their camp. Hmm? Good. So, how tired they were also being brought out there. So, good. So, pause this. Take a note of all the devices. You can expand. Of course, you have to expand on them. You have to do much expanding on it, by the way. Uh, you don't just write this in the exam. If you write something like this in the exam, just the name of the device and write pun next to it, you'll be given one mark for identifying that. And that'll just be one mark out of eight marks. Right? So you cannot you cannot just say pun and a stone's throw. You have to explain fully what that means, all aspects of it. Coming down to the exam, students get uh, frightened. Students get tired, and they just when they're tired, they just write two lines and three lines about devices. You are not going to do well if you just write two lines on your device. So you have to expand, fully explain what your device is, right? Don't just name your device. This is an upsetting question I had when I was marking last year because students just write one line because it's coming down to the end of the essay. They're tired, they're fed up writing. They write one line in the poem and they expect to get eight marks. No, you have to write a lot to explain your device fully. So Holaig, of course, we see Holaig had a major theme of supernatural. We have some similes coming out, burning myself out like cane fire to, fright, to frighten the foolish. Mm. And then we have repetition of that word, soft, soft, to show you how, how much the woman couldn't help herself. She had to go and do what she had to do to suck this baby's blood. She couldn't help herself. So again... Look back at the, the general videos and all of these poems if you are not too clear on it. I'm just going to try to run through it here. So, Little Boy Crying, we had a father there punishing the child for something he would have done. So, we can have fatherhood and childhood experiences coming out there. Devices, we have metaphors. We are comparing the father to an ogre just to show you how big this father is compared to this little child. So, he feels as though because his father is so big, he's punishing or taking advantage of this child. Again, that is in the eyes of the child. Because remember, the child is gonna is gonna view the things around him with what he sees in cartoons. So ogre is like the the Jack and the Beanstalk. So he's associating the father with a giant in the Jack and the Beanstalk story, and he will obviously be the simple Jack that is being um, taken advantage of 
by the giant, more or less. An African thunderstorm, nature and colonization, I am going to tell you that. You can go ahead and compare it with any of those. Uh, nature, because of the aspect of the storm being described, but it can also be used to bring out the idea of colonization. Check out the full video on that if you want to know more about that colonization. We have simile, plague of locusts, trying to show you how desperate of a time this um, situation of the weather was. Uh, metaphor, pelting, marching of the storm to show you how fierce this storm was coming. West Indies, USA, we have discrimination places and culture. We are seeing that the West Indies was given as a subset of the USA when we know the West Indies is totally different from the USA. Uh, contrast is presented here. We are seeing a contrast of the Caribbean life versus that of the life in the US or what the image of the US is. So we are seeing contrast is a good device there. Uh, I, similes used. Islands seem like dice toss on a casino's table. Uh, check that out. Check the full video out there to get a full explanation of that. So another device uses repetition. Stay on the plane. Stay on the plane. They're nervous. I can say that. They're nervous that the people on the plane will escape and come into the Americas or into the America, the United States of America that is. So they're urging them to stay on the plane. You know, way when the plane is in transit, you can't you come out the plane. Well, in this case, the plane is in transit in the U.S., but they can't come out the plane. <laughs> All of these poems here can do, with some extent, nature. Sonnet composed on Westminster Bridge is showing you man versus nature, places nature as well. Orchids, we can see that the flower refuses to die, so we can use death there, and that shows us how nature really, despite how uh, man tries desperately to kill it, there is some unexplained grace that nature has that keeps replenishing itself, despite how cruel man is. So again, orchids, brilliant poem. Some of the devices we have in... Sonnet composed upon Westminster Bridge, we have a beautiful personification. Then we have an alliteration, dull would he be a soul if he could pass by a sight so touching in its majesty. Uh, what else? Metaphor, dear God, the very houses seem asleep, trying to compare the house to the creature that sleeps, to a creature that sleeps. So we have an in indirect comparison there. Is the constant image of your face, brilliant poem, uh, personification is brought out. We are personifying the land, the man is personifying his country to show you how desperate he, he was in a situation of choosing between a physical woman and a person who we perceive to be a lover, which is the country. Right. So there's a person, education, he's personifying the country to be the second woman or the second mistress that he has to choose between. All right. So metaphor, grave attention, world of knives, images are of course used, hearts, treachery, things of that nature can be some major devices in Dennis Brutus poem, his constant image of your face. So check those out. Come on, you haven't clicked the like as yet. Go down, click like, and then come back and let's continue. Or go down, click like, and also click subscribe, and let's continue with this wonderful video. I'm watching. Go ahead. God's grandeur, religion, of course, nature, again. Generations have trod, have trod, have trod. Show you how generations would have worked continuously to damage the beauty of the world or the earth. But again, it will flame out like shining from shook foil. 
what's that telling you? It's telling you how God's power seems to be protecting this world like a mother, uh, mother hen, brewing, protecting her chicks. Metaphor is also brought out in God's grandeur. Oh, we are seeing that world being compared to a mother hen surrounding her chicks with her wings that's what that's being brought out there we also have rhetorical questions there why do men then not wreck his rod they're talking about god why are they trying to to make god angry in in, a, in other words theme for english b racism is one of those major themes as in that poem discrimination i don't know why my neighbor's children are screaming anyway Racism is a major theme there. Discrimination as well, in the same sense. We are seeing a little child, a little, a man, rather, not a little child, a man. A man who is told to write a page, but he is really questioning whether or not the teacher will be able to understand what he writes because he can't write and explain himself as a black man and expect a white man to possibly understand the life of a black man. That's what he's really talking about there in Theme for English B. Students often confuse Theme for English B and um, Dreaming Black Boy. Remember, Dreaming Black Boy is the boy and theme for English B is the college student, the man who has to write a page, right? So try and recap these poems if you don't know them already. Theme for English B has irony, somewhat free. We, we know that the instructor is immensely more free, but this college student thinks he's somewhat free because he's still mentally uh, enslaved, thinking that the black man is not as good as he is, who is white. Symbolism. Check that out in the video. I mentioned all of those in the original video. Racism and dreams and desire are two themes that can be used for description of Dreaming Black Boy. Remember, Dreaming Black Boy had that little boy who was longing to be accepted by the teacher in the classroom as well as the people outside in the real world. So we have allusion there being thrown at the KKK. We have metaphor, my inside I as son. We have the repetition, the strong repetition of I wish, I wish to how desperately this growing child wanted to be seen, not as a black child, but as any other growing boy that needs love and affection and approval. Parents and childhood experiences can be used to, to look at my parents. By Stephen Spender, we have some simile, uh, true words like stone, muscle, like iron, again, to show how uh, strong these children were. I don't know why this child is screaming like that. Anyway, this is a dark time, my love, by Martin Carter. Love. Remember, this man was writing to this lover, right? War, uh, nature, and patriotism. He's writing again to his lover and to his land. Remember, when this poem was actually written, Guyana, as we know it, was British Guyana then, and they were fighting for independence from the Britain, from the British. So you can understand why I'm saying patriotism is a good theme. So looking at some devices, we have personification, personifying death, but also giving human qualities to non-human uh, flowers. The red flowers bend their heads in awful sorrow. Brown beetles being compared to the soldiers, obviously. Oxymoron, festival of guns, carnival of misery. So those are some of the things you can expand on when you are writing. Sylvia Platt gifted the world with an excellent poem in the sense of mirror and in this poem we can compare it under the theme aging and feminism. Uh, some of the major devices is metaphor which she, when she said that the mirror is a little god so the mirror is compared to a god in the sense that the mirror is really telling us the truth of what is being seen when we look in the mirror that's our reflection. So the woman was upset 
uh, the fact that the mirror is giving the truth of her appearance that she has aged. Uh, South by Kamar Brafith is another poem. Migration is a major theme there. Desires, dreams, patriotism also. We can compare this one to This is the Dark Time I Love where patriotism was also another device. So we can compare these poems here with any other poem really. You just have to just talk about what is going on in one stanza compared to what's going on in one poem compared to another poem, whether they're similar or different in what regard. Devices in South, a major device is contrast, showing you how uh, the Caribbean life is compared to the stony nature of the developed world. So the free-spirited nature of the Caribbean life versus that of isolation in the developed world. So pause these screens and look at all of what is on them. Read through, make sure everything there is clear to you. And good luck in your exams. I do hope you are learning. I do hope you are confident. I am hoping that you will do well in the exams. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.